Richard Roberts here, and before we start talking about our third Weiss Brother Ben Turpin comedy, send the kids out of the room. This 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 little bit's for the adults, okay? All right, got him. Listen, a number of the silent comedy film historians in our little community. Uh, these are you know, basically the ones who hang out in the bars late at night after the film festivals drinking quite a bit. But we've postulated a theory that basically a large number of silent comedy film titles would work equally well as porno titles. Well, well Hey, let's face it, Mighty Like a Moose, Crazy Like a Fox, Mama Behave, Mum's the Word, The Caretaker's Daughter, The Uneasy Three, <laughs> Anything Once, A Two-Time Mama, Along, Came Auntie, Tame Men and Wild Women, Plain and Fancy Girls, Boobs in the Woods, Bungalow Boobs, Babes and Boobs, Bathing Beauties and Big Boobs, Don't Believe These Are Real Films, Hey, The Last One, Phytograph 1918, Starring Larry Seaman, Oh, Don't Go There, Big Business, Sugar Daddies, Double Whoopie, That's My Wife. Twice two, Bacon Grabbers, Angora Love, A Man About Town, Sailor Beware, Among Those Present, Now or Never, His Best Girl, The Kitchen Lady, The Summer Girls, His Wife's Friend, Watch Your Neighbor, His Hidden Purpose, Those Athletic Girls, Treating Him Rough, Down on the Farm, The Quack Doctor, Dangerous Curves Behind. Hotsy Totsy, Take Your Time, Spanking Breezes, The Prodigal Bridegroom, Letty, Lands Alive One. Don't tell Dad. Hey, hot and heavy, wet and warmer, hot or cold, hold that monkey! Mild, but she satisfies. Girl shy, girl shock, girl grief, wife trouble, what every ice man knows. Show me your samples. Oh, nursey, his body for rent, no clothes to guide him. Oh, what a man, silk hose and high pressure, love burglars and a bulldog. And of course, my favorite, the 1918 Universal Lions of Moran comedy, Birth Control. That's B-E-R-T-H, must take place on a train, but you get my point. Which brings us to holding his own. Now, for goodness sake, no, don't be silly. God, you have a dirty mind. I can't take you anywhere. What we have here is actually one of the rarest comedies on this set. Holding his own has seldom, if ever, turned up in any of the Weiss repackagings. And as you can see from the somewhat more ragged condition of the print, this one was saved just in the nick of time. Or depending on how you feel about it, maybe we should have waited a little longer. But yeah, that speckling is nitrate decomposition setting in to the original 35 millimeter print materials, which were on their way out when this preservation print that we're using was made. Just a, another reminder of how transient this material can be. Fortunately, nitrate can wait a little longer than the original estimates estimated, but it is unstable, volatile stuff. And every day we do preserve more film and every day we lose more film. So that's Marvin Loback playing Fat. Uh, we'll see him again in the Snub Pollard comedies. Uh, he teamed with Snub Pollard in some of his later Weiss Brother comedies in what was really a lousy uh, ripoff of <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. But we're showing you some of the best of them. And uh, he was a Senate veteran, worked with Ben Turpin at uh, the Senate studios many times. Now, getting back to Turpin's career. I think we left off basically when he joined the Weiss Brothers, and he did uh, essentially what were two seasons of comedies for the Weiss Brothers, uh, really 28, 29 season, and that was essentially the end of his uh, two-reel silent comedy career. He made a couple more feature appearances in uh, two silent films at uh, Columbia Pictures. Uh, the hit was the first one, The Wife's Relations, which starred Sir Lee Mason. Ben played Rodney St. Clair in that one for the last time. And he was also in a Columbia picture called A Woman's Way with Warner Baxter and Margaret Livingston. So when talkies came in, Ben was pretty much already retiring. Again, he didn't need the money. He was well set, but he was still willing to show up and do a cameo appearance to you know, any uh, producer would pay him a thousand bucks to spend a day or two working on the set, and so he did. He did have a few of those. He, he makes a uh, a notable cameo in Ernest Lubitsch's *The Love Parade* with Marie Chevalier and Jeanette McDonald, 1929, when Marie Chevalier is warned it's bad luck to see a cross-eyed man on the day of his wedding. Who, of course, knocks on the door? Hey, but Ben. 
Ben does a great number in Warner Brothers All-Star Musical Review, The Show of Shows. There's actually a scene called Whatever Happened to the Floridora Boys, where it's a bunch of silent film comedians. You have Ben Turpin, Lupino Lane, Lloyd Hamilton, Burt Roach, Lee Moran. Am I missing somebody? Chester Conklin. They all come out and uh, do a little dance number. And Ben actually does his, uh, his 108, which, uh, considering he was pushing 60 at that point, is pretty impressive. He, he could still do a, a 108, which was basically a, uh, <laughs> a somersault and, and fall on the ground from a standing position. But uh, that's, that's actually you know, one of his better early things. He, but he continued to do cameos. He's in Wheeler and Woolsey's Crack Nuts playing a spy. He shows up, I think, as the executioner or the butcher or something in Will Rogers' Ambassador Bill. He's a nice little cameo in the Paramount remake of Merton of the Movies from 1932, Make Me a Star. Uh, probably another one of his, his, you know, better cameos. He's in the... Paramount, another 1932 Paramount called Million Dollar Legs, which was sort of a homage to Senate comedy. Oh, oh, looks like they're wrecking a car. This must have been a pretty good budget for a Weiss Brothers here. Wrecking several cars, actually. That's that's pretty, you know, Weiss just didn't usually spend that kind of money. But anyway, Million Dollar Legs was sort of a, a Senate tribute. It was directed by Senate director Eddie Klein, and it had Andy Clyde and uh, I think Heine Conklin was in it. Ben Turpin, again, playing sort of a mysterious spy. Another role at the time, I think the Laurel and Hardy fans will certainly remember, is Ben plays the cross-eyed judge in Our Wife, uh, the boys' 1931 comedy where Ollie is trying to get married to Babe London. And, of course, Ben being the cross-eyed justice of the peace marries <laughs> Bay, Babe London to Stan by accident and uh, that's a, it's, it's actually it's, it's a nice little piece probably the largest talking role Ben Turpin had was in the 1934 mascot serial Law of the Wild which <laughs> starred Rin Tin Tin Jr. and Rex King of the Wild Horses but Ben played the comic relief part in that serial I think his name is Henry and he, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he did, he, he was throughout the serial, and you see quite a bit of him in that. So Ben was keeping somewhat busy, actually, and I think it was 1930-31, he went on a vaudeville tour, replacing Will Rogers in a uh, touring show that also featured the uh, country western uh, performer Jimmy Rogers. And, uh, yeah, now oh, Ben's... They've moved inside, we're in the party set. Have no idea who the wife is in this film, who's playing his uh, wife. But uh, this is like I said, a, a little more expensive Weiss Brother comedy. They're hiring some extras for the party. And, uh, getting to see Ben do some physical work here. Which again is fun, because like I said, we don't have all the crazed special effects of the Senate days. But showing that Ben, even at uh, pushing 60, could, uh, could do physical comedy. In any event, in 1935, another uh, grand reunion of a, a number of the Keystone players happened at Warner Brothers, where Ralph Staub was shooting a uh, basically a, another tribute to Max Sennett called the Keystone Hotel. And Ben played Count Drew a Blank, <laughs> as his name was in that, who was judging the uh, beauty contest. That, and I'm trying to remember Ford Sterling's the chief of police again, Chester Conklin, Hank Mann. That's a great little short that really does sort of recreate the Keystone feel. And there's a, a wonderful Keystone cop chase in that and a pie fight. And uh, again, you get to hear... Ben's voice. Now, Ben's voice was not spectacular. Uh, you, you know, it's just a pretty normal kind of kind of soft-spoken voice, which I think was again part of the reason why you didn't hear him doing a lot of dialogue. But uh, you know, it's still again now definitely in his 60s. You know, Ben is still <laughs> doing 
you know, all the, the physical work. And uh, apparently, was, he said even though he was, he was well off, was still willing to, to go out and do stuff for charity. Um, you know, he, I think, is involved in some of Buster Keaton's charity baseball games in the 30s. Apparently, still was uh, pretty good friends with Charles Chaplin, kept in contact. Apparently, they went duck hunting <laughs> together, which was, you know, an interest that they shared. And uh, so Ben was uh, still keeping busy, still buying real estate, even at the height of the Depression. He shelled out $50,000 to buy another apartment building and uh, was perfectly willing to work as the janitor and go clean up and do work on his apartments. So uh, he was not, uh, you know, again, not a person. I think all the years of hard living you know, made him realize, you know, and, and appreciate that, how lucky he was. And uh, so he continued to uh, live modestly, but, uh, but very happily with his second wife. Mr. Ellis. Mr. Ellis is going to be Harry Martell, who we're going to see a bit of again. He uh, is sort of a regular in the Weiss Brother comedies. Get a big build up for his entrance here. And there he is, Harry Martell. We're Grade up. He's playing a, a bit older here, but uh, another supporting comic. Actually played villains in a lot of westerns. Worked at uh, Universal for the Stern Brothers. But you're going to see quite uh, quite a bit of him throughout <laughs> this uh, this set. I said Ben continued you know, to make the occasional cameo even into the late 30s. He's in. You can see him in color in the 1937 MGM color tone musical Cinema Circus where actually again he and several other fellow Senate comics Charlie Murray and Chester Conklin are hanging about and uh, doing some bits. In fact you get to see um, Ben in color again in the 1939 feature 20, made by 20th Century Fox called Hollywood Cavalcade which uh, is another <laughs> tribute to Max Sennett. Uh, it's sort of based on Sennett's life, and Max Sennett appears in it, as does uh, Buster Keaton, who uh, actually directed some of, the, some of the comedy numbers. I think it's directed by uh, Mal Sinclair, who was uh, another uh, Sennett veteran, great comedy director from the 30s, but Ben plays a bartender in that. In his last role, was again Laurel and Hardy fans will remember playing a cross-eyed plumber in Laurel and Hardy's last Hal Roach feature, Saps at Sea, which uh, was basically a, a one-shot bit. But the gag is Laurel and Hardy's apartment; all of the pipes are messed up, and they're getting you know water out of the stove, and you know. I guess gas jets of flame are shooting out. You know, everything's all mixed up, and, and the wiring's all crossed, and they call the uh, the plumber or the you know the maintenance man to complain. And there's a shot of Ben Turpin going, I don't know, it looked all right to me, which uh, was a nice nice little gag. It uh, shot just uh, very soon before Ben Turpin's death. He passed away July 1st of 1940, at the age of 70. And I had a big funeral. In fact, they have a wonderful still photo of Ben Turpin's funeral. There's a, a big turnout. Max Sennett was there. Chaplin was there. It was a great picture. I think it's an Associated you know, United Press or Associated Press photo of all these great old comedians in suits. Got you know, I'm actually to be looking at it here. Joe Murphy, Vic Potel, Buster Keaton, Hank Mann, Charlie Murray, Snub Pollard, Billy Bevan, all looking like bankers, all very distinguished, but, uh, but yeah, Ben had definitely had a happy life, you know, at least, at least the later part of it, certainly had no complaints, was financially well off, and, uh, you know, was, was buried at Forest Lawn, out in Glendale, and, uh, you know, again, 
what was... Even though it, I don't, you know, his career in the 30s certainly was was nothing spectacular. That the face was still ingrained on the public's memory. And again, when people think of silent comedy, slapstick, uh, cross-eyed Ben Turpin, <laughs> is one of the images that uh, they immediately uh, immediately comes to mind. And you know, polit- again, political correctness aside. He was you know, a very agile and you know, capable clown. Maybe not a comic genius like Buster Keaton and those sorts, but very popular with audiences, especially in the 1920s. Again, was the, the biggest star who worked for the Weiss Brothers. <laughs> and basically, uh, just not a particularly complicated person. I'd be mean, definitely not... Uh, there, there are a number of interviews with Turpin. None of them have any spectacular quotes but again uh, there's there's one quote that he gave in 1924 it pretty much sums up the humility and and uh, you know, the way he he thought he said and these are ben turpin's words i take my hat off to two men and to one bunch of men and women charlie chaplin max senate and the public charlie brought me out here and he gave me my start i'll always feel grateful to him for it max senate put me over big he has never broken his word about one single thing, and that's the kind of man I tie to. I'll never work for anybody but him. Well, he did, but that's all right. And finally, to the public. Every actor ought to take his hat off to the public. Well, Ben did that, and he used him for 30 years. And again, goes back, can be considered perhaps America's first <laughs> silent film comedian, major silent film comedian was known by name. Oop, he and Harry are getting into a... <laughs> Whoa, we have Harry Martell and Ben Turpin in a little Ben Turpin bondage action here. That's kind of... All right, we'll get up to that. <laughs> I don't know, we have... This has nothing to do with anything. But, uh, again, Ben Turpin, great comic. And the, his comedies for the Weiss Brothers were some of the more popular ones they had. These did, on the Weiss Brothers scale, make... A decent chunk of change for them. And so we're glad to be presenting one of the rarer ones here. And I think we're going to wrap, as unfortunately a number of Weiss Brother comedies do, <laughs> with, are we going to see, yep, a pie, a, oop, uh-oh. I think there's actually more pie fights in Weiss Brother comedies than anywhere else. The the, the myth <laughs> that pie fights were were a constant in silent comedies. No, they weren't. Actually, yeah, you know, an occasional pie would be thrown, but you will see several pie fights coming up. <laughs> in, uh, I think at least two of the uh, films uh, that we're showing on this set. Oh, I guess it's a, it's it's an easy not you know, completely destructive way to wrap up a film. And we've just wrapped up this one. Hope you enjoyed it.